so this is Radio Land, huh? The infinite turtle, the, the waves through the ether fuzz roll on forever. Music is my life. What's up, Jeep Creepers? Hey, I got another awesome build that I'm working on. Since my ammo can um, pellet stove was so much fun, and I'm gonna have a lot of fun using it this summer, I thought, hey, I've seen a lot of these other ideas going around. An ammo can boombox. Oh my god, what an idea. Well, check it out. I got some parts put together, and uh, we'll see if we can make this work. So first off, size comparison. This is the Harbor Freight regular 50 caliber can. As you can tell, it's not as tall. It's not as long. And it's not as wide as the prestigious Fat 50 can. So if you're gonna make one of these, I recommend getting a Fat 50 can just to make your life a little bit easier. Now, what is this thing gonna include? Well, I got some old speakers. I got some Sony five and a quarter speakers, four ways. Um, these are the XSR1346 speakers. It's peak power is 230, but really all you really care about is the uh, RMS, which is 35. Um, so we need an amp. Um, I ordered a Bluetooth amp it's a bluetooth receiver and um i think it has fm and it also has usb on it so you can plug in your usb and then it has a little selector thing so these speakers are going to be mounted side by side in this box they'll fit pretty good so then i got to thinking well how we're going to power that well i found a little cheapy battery it's just a little guy but it is a, I believe this is a 12 amp hour. I can't remember how many amp hours this is. Uh, I don't remember. What's the charging method? I don't remember how many amp hours this is. But it's basically like an ATV battery. That's going to power it. One of the cool things I'm going to have is a power inverter. So I'm going to have AC power outlets on this thing and a USB charger. And uh, this is the Harbor Freight Centic. If that's how you say it. Uh, it's 750 watts of continuous power and has a peak of 1500. So that's awesome. And then I thought, I got to thinking too, like, what can we do to make this even cooler? Boom, this thing is going to solar recharge itself. Now, this is not a super strong thing. It's not going to power it. It's basically just a trickle charger, which is kind of nice because I don't think I need any kind of crazy things on the battery. And its case is a little bit bigger than the lid. So I'm going to take that apart and see if I can't get that to fit on the lid. Um... So yeah, let's get that started. All right, so they don't make this easy on this panel. So uh, these are just little plastic, plastic welded nubs, I think. So I'm gonna drill those out to try to get this panel out to see how much smaller we can get this thing to get. Ah, there we go. Using my Harbor Freight Pittsburgh pick. It's starting to sound like uh, Tim the Toolman Taylor. But, uh, yeah, I buy all their stuff. Just pick off all these caps. It's just a regular Phillips. So if I jack that one up too bad or not. Oh no, I did not. Good. It still comes out. Mm. 
Okay. You can see it's sealed in there pretty good. Taking it out of its casing, it is significantly smaller. And as I thought, it, uh, it just barely fits in there. I'm gonna figure out how I wanna mount it. I'll probably do a similar mount to where it's got a, a glued seal around it so it's waterproof-ish on the top. And then I think I'm going to offset it. Like down like that. And then I can put my handle still on it. I'm going to need to do. Let's take this plate out, which holds that seal in. So I might be able to reuse that seal by gluing it in. But let's uh, let's pull it out first. Just had little uh, cheap spot welds holding that in, so it's cool. We'll save that, it's not too bent up. We'll use that for another project. All right, here's what we're working with that is the actual plate. Let's try our dry fit again. Look at that! Shoot, that is. That is perfect. That fits nice. I couldn't have gotten that any closer. Now the question is, we don't want it sitting here because it'll crunch down on the lid. So we need to cut out. Let me think. If the lid comes down in that groove, that'll hit the panel. So we need to shave our lid down. Let's not forget to do that so I don't break the panel. And then... Oh, you know what? It seems so thin. I was going to flush mount it on the inside, but not really any much reason to, is there? I mean, it would look cooler coming through the bottom. But I mean, I got I to cut part of that hinge bracket. Yeah, I think I'm just going to put it on top.
I mean, I'm not going to use this, right? Although I could. I could just shave it down. It's too big. Well, it's too wide, I think. Oh, well, not really. So what we'll do is we'll reuse this plastic. We'll just trim it down to where it mounts in on that edge right there. Kind of weird as I was cutting it just fused back together from the heat. Well, that's a pretty clean break though. All right, we'll just continue to do that and to hold it back in place, I guess we'll just glue it back in, but that shaves off like, God, two inches on, from both sides. Good. Or I can just cut it where it stands. Good stuff. Now the, the one thing you gotta remember, it's got this charging light indicator, so we're gonna need to move that. Let's get this handle out of our way. Accidentally put a couple holes in there, but uh, we'll patch it. Don't worry about that. Don't worry about a thing, chicken wing. I think what I'm going to do is reseal this first. super pretty you could paint it um, since this is clear silicone it's just gonna be clear color uh, for color I guess Kind of makes all my sanding look darker or black. And I want to get it as smooth as possible so it looks somewhat like it was meant to be that way. Okay, what we're going to use for our amplifier and our stereo source. It's an AK380. And uh, taking off the four screws on the back. And the two on the side, two there. And now I'm just trying to get it to come apart. I need to take the knobs off. Okay. Yep, oh, I got I got it off. Just gotta be careful. Pull it up. And that's what we're working with on the inside. 
we're gonna basically use this plate as a template. All right, let's get that centered as possible. Wow. That's gonna be a lot of drilling. Okay, yeah, that's a good fit. Thin down, flattened. All right, sorry about that guys. My phone died while filming the mounting of this, but basically you get the gist. The, uh, the back plate comes on, um, the screws on this, on these knobs hold it together as well as these four uh, screws that is mounted into the, uh, the amplifier. Uh, all right, so let's see what this thing looks like, right? Look at that pretty blue glow. Ooh, hi. So, yeah, we got the uh, line. I hit the mode button here. We got FM radio and Bluetooth. Now, if we had uh, a USB plugged in for MP3 or an SD MMC card, um, that would light up as well. And then we have our controls. Um which would change the um, tracks, you know, your play functionality. When it's on radio, it actually has presets. And the real cool thing about this is if you hit this play button, check this out. It just scans for a signal and automatically sets your channels. How cool is that? So yeah, I'm really digging this thing. Um, all right, so in the next video, I think I'm going to go ahead and get the um, power inverter mounted, and it'll be down in this section somewhere. And then from there, probably figure out where the speakers are going to go exactly. i got to be careful on the height of where everything's at so, um, so it all fits in here. But yeah, stay tuned for another Jeep Creeper exclusive Boombox Stereo.